All right, if you've been recently diagnosed with prostate cancer, one of the things you're going to want to know about is PSA. You probably know a lot about it already, but I just want to briefly go over PSA. PSA is a protein, and it is made by this prostate gland. So this here is the prostate, and the prostate, and there's even evidence that suggests maybe that these seminal vesicles produce some PSA, but primarily PSA is produced by this prostate. And so PSA can be altered in many individuals for a lot of different reasons. And so when your PSA goes up, one of the things that can cause that is infection. So if there's infection in the prostate, there's an inflammatory response actually in the prostate, this PSA can go up because of infection, but it has to be infection of the prostate. A lung infection, skin infection is not going to cause increased PSA. So it has to be either a urinary tract infection or a prostate infection that may cause this PSA to go up. The most common cause of elevated PSA is what's called BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia, or just growth of the prostate. As there's more prostate tissue and the prostate gets bigger, there's more PSA that is produced by this prostate. The reason we use it in urology, we use it as a marker um, in a screening test for prostate cancer. So if there's a cancer that's present, not only will the entire prostate produce PSA, but oftentimes these cancers will also produce PSA. And so we'll pick up someone with an elevated PSA. That's usually what urologists are looking for, is ruling out prostate cancer as the source of elevated PSA. So PSA is very useful in medicine. It, it's been around since the 80s. It's been extensively studied. It's still the best screening test we have for prostate cancer currently. So we still use it. PSA is important. And the higher the PSA, usually the higher risk of prostate cancer in those patients. So we use it, one, to diagnose prostate cancer or to help in diagnose. Because just having an elevated PSA doesn't mean you have cancer. There still needs to be a tissue diagnosis or a prostate ultrasound and biopsy that's done to get tissue to see if that tissue is cancerous or it's benign. So we use it to diagnose prostate cancer. Another reason we use PSA is after treatment for prostate cancer, whether it's surgery or radiation or focal therapy or hormone treatment or proton beam therapy, all these different treatments for prostate cancer. Now PSA is what is used to monitor the success of whatever treatment was done. In surgery, for example, if this entire prostate is removed, if what makes PSA is removed, your PSA should essentially be zero. There shouldn't be any PSA. And so if you've had surgery and your PSA starts going up, there's concern for recurrent cancer or cancer distant, either locally advanced cancer that's there or potentially spread of cancer elsewhere because there should be no PSA. With radiation, it's different. Radiation treatments are delivered. You know, someone goes undergoes 40 radiation treatments or 20 radiation treatments, and then this PSA is monitored. And what will happen, the PSA will get down to its lowest level called the nadir. As someone is at that nadir, now the PSA is watched to see, is it creeping up? And we, again, we use the PSA to help manage after treatments for prostate cancer. So PSA is important. It's a blood test that we use as urologists. We use a lot 
something that you need to know what your PSA level is. It's important to get a trend. Is your PSA trending up? Is it a slow trend or, or is it a, an accelerated trend? That's important. There's other things like PSA density and things like that that correlates PSA with size of prostate. And so someone with a prostate that's 100 grams or is very big, in that patient, you would expect their PSA to be higher. Someone that has a PSA of 10 and has a 30 gram prostate, a, a normal sized or a smaller sized prostate, that's usually much more worrisome for the presence of cancer because a small gland with an elevated PSA is just more suspicious for cancer. Again, a biopsy needs to be done. Tissue needs to be obtained to see if there is cancer there. That's where we're at with PSA, very important blood tests. And if you've been diagnosed with prostate cancer, you know about PSA and you know it's important. You need to know what your values are going forward. So I'm Dr. William Stiles. I'm a board certified urologist talking to you about PSA and the importance of PSA with regards to not only diagnosing prostate cancer, but also managing prostate cancer after definitive treatment.